Welcome to the definitive guide on UK defined benefit pension transfers. Okay, if you're finding this video, it means you've worked probably for quite a long period of time back in the day, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the noughties, probably some pretty large organizations or you held a relatively senior position, or you may not have held a relatively senior position. UK defined benefit schemes were common practice back in the day because they wanted you to stay. It's not like this day and age, people move around Tom, Dick and Harry and work for 17 different companies in their life. People used to stay in the same scheme over the course of their life, or the same uh, company over the course of their lifetime, many people. However, these pension schemes were basically too good to be true. Your employers did not rec did not exceed what was going to happen over the course of the years. People were going to live longer, aging, uh, increased technology, um, aging uh, population in the United Kingdom. So the, the defined benefit schemes, a lot of them are now significantly underfunded for the benefits which they need to promise um, and pay out to you. Now, this is not a scare tactic. In the United Kingdom, if your defined benefit scheme goes into default, you'll go into the pension protection fund and you'll get 90% typically of your annual um, pension that you should have got. However, that's not really ideal because you'll never be able to transfer out once you go into a pension protection fund or well, you never have the option um, to transfer out. So when it comes to doing a transfer, defined benefit pensions, if you've been doing any reading at all yet, you will understand this is a highly regulated, annoying and confusing area of financial planning. A lot of people get really pissed off and they say, Dominic, it's ridiculous. It's my pension. I paid in. What's it got to do with the government? Why have they made all this legislation? Okay, I understand your concerns. However, I would say I also side um, with the FCA and the UK government here in trying to ensure that people are not being ripped off or scammed of transferring out of the defined benefit scheme. Now, when I say ripped off or scammed, it's not necessarily that the money's gonna go missing. I mean, I've, in all my years, 13 years in the industry, I have never known money or never heard of money going missing inside somebody's SIP or something like that. But you can invest into bad assets inside a SIP, particularly if your financial advisor is not very good. Um, in the UK, that's less of a problem now. Regulation has really come up in the United Kingdom, but they are there to try and protect you from making a mistake with your UK pension assets. And most importantly, with a defined benefit pension, you are gonna get a guaranteed income from life from a normal retirement age of either 60 or 65 from your defined benefit scheme. This is why they're referred to as gold-plated. So you need to understand before you even start an advice process, any pension transfer specialist, IFA, anyone you work with must start off from the viewpoint that it is not suitable for you to transfer your defined um, uh, benefit scheme. If you wanna have a conversation with myself, you can book in below via the description for a calendar meeting with myself um, or one of our senior financial advisors to discuss um, uh, your situation um, and how we may be able to help. So the regulation is there and it's frustrating. Okay, but rather than being pissed off about it, just get into it. Like as a financial advisor, I have absolutely no choice. The FCA makes the rules and I play to them. We actually go further than the rules by the FCA to make sure that we are doing things um, correctly. So get into it, do your research. When it comes to final salary pension transfers though, I would always recommend you to work with somebody who is truly an expert and has a lot of knowledge and understanding. Not a financial advisor who does a little bit of everything and they do two or three defined benefit pension transfers per year. I would say they're possibly not the most suitable person for you to work with. You want to work with someone who truly specializes in defined benefit pension transfers. The reason I say this is that selfishly from your perspective, if you invite or if you ask someone to do it for you who's a bit of a Tom, Dick and a Harry, yes, they may be able to help you lots of different things, but you need to be a specialist. Defined benefit pension transfers are extremely annoying and confusing and take a very, very long period of time to complete. It can take anywhere between 9, 12, we've even seen 18 months before for defined benefit pension transfers to complete. The typical timeline is closer to around three to four months. But if you don't know what you're doing and you get it wrong, it can, it can take a much um, a larger um, amount of time. So the key takeaway, if you're going to take anything away from this, is you need need to be prepared and understand it's going to be a difficult and complicated advice process. Now, from a marketing perspective, people are saying, Dominic, don't say it's going to be difficult and complicated. People don't want to hear that. But it's honest. It's not easy. It is really complicated. And a lot of clients joke with me and they say, oh, Dominic, love the service, love the reviews, love everything. I read everything that coming, testimonies, I love it. But it's a little bit expensive for the initial advice. There's someone I know who's doing it um, 200 quid cheaper than you or whatever it is but they don't understand how much work goes into it. And those very same clients, they laugh and joke at the end of the advice process and say, Dominic, they send emails, dear Dominic, dear transfer team, dear support team, thank you so much for all of your help over the past seven, eight, nine months or three, four, five months. I have no idea how you guys remain so patient. These guys were doing my head in. Thank you so much. Is there any way that I can um, buy you guys uh, something or something? Obviously, financial services, we can't accept gifts from clients, but I always say to it's okay. The, our team obviously like the feedback um, and that's good enough for them. So be very, very careful who you're working with with defined benefit pension transfers. Make sure they know what they're doing and quiz them. 
quiz them a lot, ask them difficult questions. Are you being remunerated by anyone else? What is the TER of the underlying portfolio that I'm gonna invest in? The total expense ratio is so important. So many clients say to me, oh, you're charging 1% Cameron James. I'm working with an IFA who's only charging me 0.5% per annum. I say, okay, great, perfect, go work with them. When you're gonna go work with them, just double check this for me though. What is the total cost of the whole portfolio? The platform, the SIP, the underlying funds and the IFA charge. Often they come back and say, oh, it's 2.2%. Okay, so yeah, so here at Cameron James, we're 1.5% because we hustle all the other providers in the industry to get the best possible price that we can for our clients. And more importantly, whilst past performance is no guide to future performance, our balanced portfolio, which is circa 60, 65% equity weighted, has done around 54% at the time of recording over the course of the past five years, including COVID-19, including 2022, which has been horrific. So yes, we have our 1% annual management charge, but our clients that have been in that portfolio for the past five years have had circa 50% return. And again, please caveat that, Past performance is no guide to future performance because our portfolio has performed well for five years doesn't mean it's guaranteed to perform well for the next five years, but it at least gives you a clear benchmark of how the portfolio has returned, um, uh, what the returns have been um, in the past. So really got to be careful with your defined benefit pension transfers. Make sure you're working with a regulated and qualified person. If you find the video valuable, please like and subscribe below to let YouTube know that we're doing a good job and to share this um, uh, with lots of other people. A lot of clients often say to me, Dominic, how do I get the best deal um, on my final salary pension transfer? I would say that unfortunately, this is probably not an area that you want to go shopping to find the very best deal. Um, if you can find two companies which are equally reputable great performance, great reviews, working with the Financial Times, all this great stuff which makes you feel comfortable and one of them has half the cost of the other, great, sounds like a very good deal. But most costs in financial advice are <laughs> correctly done based on the service that that company um, uh, provides. And when you're trying to get something like this cheap, you have to remember this is one of the biggest assets in your life. It may well be the biggest asset and the biggest financial decision you ever make. Do you really want to be working with someone who's a couple of hundred quid cheaper, but far less experienced and potentially lesser returns or not so good ongoing advice? Do they do cash flow planning? Do they just give you one appointment per year and talk about the performance? That's what people did 10 years ago. It's totally outdated now. The FCA is coming down on this because with consumer duty, you have to be providing value to clients. Here at Cameron James, for all of our defined benefit clients, we do proper cash flow analysis and planning with them. And it starts to take away performance, to perform, perform, performance. Yes, I was talking about performance earlier, but you can't guarantee performance. We can give you a correctly equity weighted portfolio, but the markets are gonna do what the market's gonna do. I can't control the markets. I can't go and fix Russia, Ukraine, no one can. You have to invest correctly and let the markets do their thing over the course of time. Over five, 10, 15, 20 years, invested in the right portfolio, you will have growth. But over the course of those five, 10, 15, 20 years, you have so many important decisions to make. Are you gonna draw down your tax-free amount if you were to complete a defined benefit pension transfer? How are you gonna pass the money on to your kids? What amount of money do you actually need in retirement to spend? And when you do prop, we use Voyon, which is very expensive. It's about three grand uh, per financial advisor, but it is an excellent piece of kit, which really helps my clients to look at the next 20 years of their life. Ask the difficult questions. How are you gonna pay for um, home care when you're old? Clients don't like to talk about it, but I have to talk to them about it. How are you gonna pay? It's expensive. They say, oh no, no, it's fine. I'll live at home with my family. Really? What, they have their kids? They have that? You need to think about all these things. And this is where people get so focused on cost, um, on defined benefit pension transfers. But the defined benefit pension transfer itself is just one part of a holistic advice process. And here at Cameron James, we don't just focus on people's defined benefit pension transfers. We will look at everything. The defined contributions, their ICEs, their GIAs, what's happening with their mortgage, what's happening with their will, do they have a lasting power in place? That is proper um, uh, financial advice. Sorry, bit of a rant there, but you've got to be really careful when shopping around for defined benefit pension transfers advice, make sure you're working with a professional who's going to be there with you the long term to ensure that asset is primed, ready for growth over the long term if equity markets grow, but also delivers you all of the other benefits that a real financial advisor should be providing. Guys, I hope you find it valuable. Please like and subscribe below. And as always, take care with your UK pension assets.